Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is the Piracy Show. I figured I'd start off today with um, just some outtakes from over the weekend. So, whoops. <laughs> you know, because when I, I did the video of you know me kind of sneaking onto somebody's ship, shooting them and taking their ship... I kind of wanted to add some stuff showing that it, it's, you know, for pirates, it's not all fun and games. I mean, mishaps do occur on a, a frequent basis. Like, here I am. Once again, I'm trying to steal someone else's ship. I left his name up, and you'll see why in a second. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're off. We're off now. I'm just... I'm thinking he's going to the Convalex station, so I need to get a better angle, and then whoops, whoops, and glitched out of the ship, and dead. <laughs> oh my god. So once again, waking up back at my, uh, in my little cubicle, and then off on my adventures again. And here's the Xeon Scout. I was actually chatting with some people in local and I didn't see this guy sneak up on me until right at the end. So I'm thinking, okay, I can, I can deal with this, I can deal with this. I, I can handle this situation. Of course, my ship is massively damaged, but... I can handle... No, I can't. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so Xeon Scout. Not the most resilient ship out there. <laughs> so, yeah, there was just a ton of misadventures and ridiculous glitches that happened over the weekend. Here I am trying to board someone's Starfarer with a group of people to take it over. So I'm sneaking up. I'm thinking, all right, he won't be able to see me. A few of us have, are already almost right on top of it. I go, okay, I'm going in. I'm going in, I'm going in on the catwalk where the refueling pod is. I'm gonna walk in through that door. I'm gonna take out the pilot. I'm gonna steal a star fare. Yup. Boom, spontaneous. <laughs> it was, it was, honestly, it, it's just glitches like this all weekend. So if you think I'm just going around like stealing people's ships and not paying the penalty, oh no, I'm paying the penalty. <laughs> but yeah, over the weekend though, I had uh, I had some time to think over a lot of things. You know, clearly, <laughs> I, had, I had some spare time on my hands, except for Sunday. Sunday, I realized that once again the piracy show is, you know. Well, actually, I haven't said it yet, but the Piracy Show is late this week just because, well, Sunday was Father's Day, and I also had to do just a little minor home repair, and on top of that, well, Game of Thrones. Sorry. So, I wasn't able to get the episode done. Well, I did get something done, but it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, so I decided to kind of scrap it at the last minute and go back and do it all over again. So, here we go with the proper piracy show now. Now, one of the first things that I kind of wanted to deal with um, was the Dragonfly, of course. The Drake Dragonfly, big deal. It just came out this weekend. I purchased the um, Caterpillar Plus 2 Dragonfly package. Just melted what I needed to get that. And, um, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, Caterpillar is supposed to be next hangar ready ship, so... Definitely something to look forward to there, and plus now I got the dragonfly or dragonflies. I've got one of each, so I'm pretty excited about that. But in terms of um, in terms of space combat as a singular ship, obviously, you know when you look at it, it's only got two size one guns on the front, though they are mounted very close together. I did like the weapon mounting on this; that was very nice. Um, I feel possibly there should be a third gun on there slung underneath and not a projectile, please and thank you. Just a third kind of laser type or 
regular type weapon, not a, you know, just an application specific uh, weapon like we have on the uh, the P-52 Merlin. But as a singular ship against NPCs, I think it'll be all right. I think it's going to be good against other players because of time to kill being so high right now. I'm not sure that that's really going to uh, that's really going to pan out in um, in a one v one situation. But as a swarm launched from a caterpillar. I think that that could be pretty damn deadly, especially if you got a few guys running Joker Sucker Punches on theirs to kind of like wear ships down and wear down their shields and their systems. And then having that those extra size ones and then possibly even the guns from the mothership to help out. It could be a potentially deadly wolf pack there. So that's definitely something that um, I'm enthusiastic about and I want to test and I want to see. And not only that, just... The fact that we have a nice ground transport now, instead of just the Great Cat PTV, I, I'm excited about that because I, I, you know, I, I'm probably like a lot of people. I kind of wanted a speeder bike instead of a Great Cat PTV, anyways. And now that it's, you know, it's here, or not here, but it's on its way. I'm very excited about that, and I, and I like that. But obviously, Area 18 is not the final iteration of Area 18, but in the future, we're going to have to think about having much bigger levels with roadways and sidewalks and all that. Otherwise, you know, with people with hover bikes and great cat PTVs, you know, motoring around on the surface of planets, people are going to be getting killed left, right, and center. And so it would probably be a good idea to, um, in the future, when designing future worlds, to allow for a roadway area for high-speed traffic and a walkway for people who are just walking, depending on how big these worlds are. But I'm assuming that you know these city levels or whatnot, these capital cities are going to be fairly expansive. So it'd probably be a good idea to think along those lines of having avenues, roads, and boulevards, and the whole thing and sidewalks for just the regular pedestrians but overall yeah i'm definitely excited i want to see it i've got them so as soon as they're in we'll be, we'll be looking at them now i i want to get back to um 2.4 a little bit um i don't know about you guys but i have been having some bizarre momentary stutters all over the place I'm assuming that's network related because it it's it, it's really kind of getting to the point where I, I'm kind of like oh god you know this is at the worst possible time because sort of like that clip that I showed earlier where I was in my car too and it's just like oh by the way you died and you're gone that had happened a few times. Um, I was I was getting these I don't know like a weird bug where I was getting hit notifications when I was shooting things, but they weren't dying and they weren't taking damage. And then all of a sudden, damage would show up, and then I would be dead. So I, I'm assuming network issue, but maybe not. Maybe. Maybe it's on my end, maybe it's my video card, but my video card I think is fine for right now. Obviously not into the future, I gotta get something better and something a lot beefier, but for right now it seems uh, pretty good. Another thing, um, fighters, just the, the way they move seems a little bit, a little bit odd to me. It's just, especially with the car two. The car two, it seems a little bit mishmashy, but I kind of want to. I want to carry that into uh, the next topic that I want to talk about. But I was also, ex I was just wondering, like, if anyone else has this experience, if anyone else has been experiencing this issue. But it almost seems like there's a hard limit set on how hard, on how much your weapons can cool. 
I, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that because whenever I put coolers on my ship, I swear there's like next to no difference. Maybe there's a difference in the signature of the ship, but there's no difference in weapon cooling. Because, I mean, it's almost like the weapons have their own set rate of cooling, and irregardless of whether you have good coolers or bad coolers or stock coolers or aftermarket coolers, there really doesn't seem to be any performance difference that I could perceive in how well the ship cooled, whether I went out and got coolers for wreck or not. And so, that was a little bit off, I found. So those are just some of the issues that I've been having in 2.4. Nothing, you know, obviously it's going to make me like rage quit or anything like that. But still, they're there. But lastly, there was something I wanted to kind of deal with. Which kind of relates to the dragonfly a little bit. And, you know, getting the caterpillar. Which, of course, is a large ship. But given... I don't know, given your guys' experience in the P in the PU yourselves, do you find that fighters seem to have, like, you know, I'm talking about not NPCs, but players, seem to have a pretty long time to kill? If you bring, if you kind of put a couple of Joker Sucker Punches on your ship, sometimes it, you know, it mitigates that and it brings things down a lot faster, but... Even with decent weaponry, it's almost, I swear, like I'm getting hit indicators, but yet the ship is just not dying. And, like, I'm, I'm hitting them with broadswords over and over and over again, and I'm getting the hit notifications, and all of a sudden nothing is turning red, and then all of a sudden a wing will turn red or something like that, and then I'm still hitting the person, but it's like I'm not hitting them. You know what I mean? It just... The more I'm playing in the PU, the more I'm starting to think that are fighters maybe not the way to go because even though fighters were proving to be you know pretty resilient, larger ships were taking so much damage before they would die. I'm almost wondering if you know once turrets are you know fully brought online and fully usable and not just you know how they are right now where they seem where you seem to be kind of like wavering all over the place and nothing really seems it doesn't really seem to um too refined at the moment but once it's really kind of nailed down more like kind of sitting in a turret in war thunder type idea i'm wondering if kind of being a crew member on a larger ship and being able to kind of work the shields and doing all of that I'm kind of wondering if that isn't the safer place to play. And just in terms of protecting yourself as a as a character in the game. And maybe using NPCs as distraction fighters or whatnot. Cause I, I don't know, it just it seems to me like in order to really bring down fighters quickly, you have to use like a freelancer or something really upsized. Whereas with other fighters, I don't know, it's just, uh, maybe it's me, but it just seems like it takes a really long time to take down another fighter, whereas if you're in a larger ship, you can sometimes do it in three, four shots. So I'm almost wondering if it wouldn't be a better idea to kind of run with, you know, a larger ship along the lines of, say... Now, I know I'm going to I'm going to get some flack for this, but along the lines of a redeemer, because a redeemer has an insane amount of gimbaled guns. That's really got to eat into that time to kill and the way fighters are moving right now. I mean, everything seems so I mean, ships are moving around so lazily in the PU, you know? Everything moves around like it's it's kind of weighed down or stuck. And it's it almost seems like we're we're in this kind of area where fighters that are supposed to be maneuverable or highly maneuverable really aren't maneuverable to a degree where, where that would be an advantage, if you know what I mean. Even like the car, the car too. 
its ability to move into a lateral strafe or a vertical strafe or whatnot, it never really seems to have the ability to outpace the ship that it's circling to get out of the way of its guns, especially if it's like a Hornet where it's got all gimbaled guns. It never seems to really be able to command enough maneuverability to, to be able to outpace those weapons, you know? And, and so, you know, when I'm flying around in the car too, I'm always thinking, you know, NPCs are one thing, but it really doesn't have the guns to really seal the deal on a player because of the higher resilience of player ships. And I'm starting to kind of look at some of the bigger ships, especially the Redeemer. Now, I know there are people who have issues with the Redeemer. Yeah, I, I get it. But in terms of just sheer firepower, something like that, or something like a Freelancer Miss, I'm wondering if that isn't perhaps a better choice, just because it would have such a commanding advantage in firepower. And overall, fighters just do not seem that maneuverable in the game right now. I mean, they really seem bland, I guess would be the best word that I can use to describe it. Like, the, the motion of fighters just seems so sedate and so lazy. Whereas, you know, freelancer, the freelancers seem to have very little issue keeping pace with uh, smaller ships in terms of having the gimbaled weapons. And their maneuverability there doesn't really seem to be such a distinct line between a ship the size of a freelancer or a vanguard and a ship the size of a super hornet or a car to all so i'm wondering if i shouldn't uh if i shouldn't keep that freelancer mist token uh handy for just a little while longer and see how that turns out anyways those are just some of my thoughts um from the gameplay that I've been doing over the weekend. Sorry once again for the episode being late. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Quantum Travel Initiated